Thanks Wanji. a lot. <coughs> Stage is Thank yours. Thank you. So this is not the Chromebook. It's a uh, Ubuntu <laughs> Linux machine. So you know what's happened when we connect the uh, fancy hardware. So right, thanks. So I'm Wanji Kumar Suwajoti. Don't get uh, confused with my longer name. Call me Wanji. It's good enough. I'm a lead solution engineer with WSO2. At the same time, I'm a part of the Apache Synapse uh, Committee Group and the Project Management Committee uh, team as well. So I didn't get the click. That's fine. So uh, most of you guys know that modern uh, enterprise uh, not like traditionally centralized enterprise architecture is not enough for uh, um, to deliver the right solutions and the uh, to meet the business and consumer needs as the current mod, uh, business are like consumer driven. So uh, we know this monolithic application. How many of you guys have uh, the similar setup in your enterprise? Very few. So. Yes, as most of you guys uh, understand, this is not scalable in terms of uh, the functionality wise and when you need uh, a new release, you have to release the entire stack. So we went ahead with the um, API driven uh, solution. So when you break down the monolithic applications, you will break down uh, in terms of like services, uh, for example, in this case, there are order service, inventory service, and those has its own functionalities. But uh, when you expose these API, you really want to have some kind of gateway solution uh, that will allow you to expose these APIs to your internal and external consumers. How many of you guys have this kind of setup in your enterprise? Awesome. But again, when you consider this setup, right now you have all of your services uh, like breaking down the pieces, but when you see the communication between your consumer and the services, there is a layer called API Gateway, and uh, it's being as a center of excellences. So when I <coughs> put this into like some bullet points with what are the problems that you can identify with these particular two architectures. You can see that uh, the API gateway is getting as a central of excellences. When you really want to um, uh, release a new one, it's causing uh, scalability complexities and, uh, and making a more maintainable issues. And then uh, at the same time, when you look into the previous services over here, those are two cross-grain and unable to scale independently, and uh, still require significant effort from your DevOps and the developer perspective. Uh, then, again, when you consider the uh, relationship between the developers and architects, uh, or the uh, DevOps, it's, it's uh, internally providing agile technologies, but again, when you consider the uh, release process and everything, it's still, again, waterfall because of the nature of the center of excellences. Um, then when you having a new change request or when there is a new changes coming into the place, now, again, you have to go through with this uh, process in terms of going through uh, the gateway release and then uh, service release and so on and so forth. So most of the time, you are ending up uh, setting up the se separate integration layers to accommodate these uh, service changes. So for that, uh, we would like to introduce a, a cell-based architecture over here. So a cell is nothing other than the uh, collection of components which can be independently deployable, manageable uh, scale. At the same time, you can observe those cells. So uh, when you look into this, uh, interaction between this, uh, the microservices or the services within that cell are in. All right, thanks. Um, thank you. When you look into the uh, interaction, the intra-cell communications are allowed without any boundaries. You can communicate within the um, services. But when it comes to inter-cell communications, it's only allowed via the, the 
cell gateway that you are seeing on top of them. So uh, compounds within the uh, cells can be reusable at the same time it can uh, scale as you need it. So the compatible between these uh, cells must be exposed as the network accessible endpoints. So the cells can be developed and managed by a single team so that when you look into the types of the components within the cell, there can, have, there can be a cell gateway or there can be end user application or microservices. Uh, it can be uh, serverless functions inside there or there can be a legacy services along with the data repositories. So to summarize the concept of cells, so the cell is uh, self-contained and uh, deployable as a single unit, and it's an API-centric along with the, it contains the uh, data plane and control plane. But when we consider the traditional uh, way of releasing uh, 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 API management flow, there can be a uh, first point where you develop your API by designing and documenting that through your, it can be a open API specification or it can be uh, some kind of other option that you have. Once you design, it will be published into the ecosystem that you have already. So once it's available in your API solution ecosystem, so your developers come there and discover those API in order to consume that. So once they consume, they will be in the process of developing their app and they will be releasing for their end consumers. But if you uh, go through this flow, uh, it's always a top-down approach while you're delivering the APIs. But Agile business require not that way, but it's always recommended to have the delivering the APIs um, not as a separate things. And it also need to be automated when there is a new services or when there is a new uh, app is getting released. It has to be uh, native to development rather than they are going through the uh, center of excellences. So micro gateways facilitate the bottom up delivery of APIs as uh, smaller groups. So when we say micro gateways, uh, it's allowing you to uh, decentralize these APIs. So for example, uh, you can have uh, an uh, open specification uh, that written, it can be a swagger or something like that. Once you have that, you should be able to generate a, a micro gateway runtime based on what you have written in the open specification. So which allow you to automatically generate the runtime based on the description that you have already with you. So in typical world, there can be uh, multiple micro gateways in your ecosystem. So when, you, when I refer micro gateway, it can be integrated with a single API or there can be multiple different API in place. So again, when you expose this to uh, 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 consumers or applications, um, so to secure your API, you will be always having some kind of uh, security mechanism in place. It's well, traditionally it's known as the uh, security token services. At the same time, uh, the micro gateway provide the integration between uh, different microservices. So this particular architecture is a quite stateless architecture. At the same time, there is no synchronized communication between the external component over here. It is the uh, token security service. But if you really imagine the existing uh, ecosystem, you traditionally have a gateway which will always, uh, when there is a request coming into the gateway, the gateway will go to the com uh, communicate with the key manager and uh, once the key manager says, yes, this guy is uh, perfectly uh, okay to access this API, it will come back to key, uh, Gateway and then Gateway again talk with some kind of traffic management uh, system and ask for whether this person is uh, rate limit or not and then come back. So those kind of communications are, are synchronous and it causes uh, lots of latency 
uh, in your ecosystem. So with the micro gateway approach, uh, there won't be any synchronous communication with external components such like uh, token services. At the same time, that there will be a fast bootstrap because you all don't need to package everything together at the same time, uh, which allow you to have a low resource consumption. But at the same time, in the modern world, we do not have only the uh, HTTP, but we also have other uh, services like G gRPC services. So micro gateway should be able to provide the ac access to these different uh, prototypes, uh, sorry, pro protocols like HTTP and G uh, gRPC. So when the client is accessing those services, the micro gateway providing uh, uh, access to the HTTP and gRPC through a single runtime. Uh, at the same time, when you have the uh, HTTP or GRP services, there can be a need where you really want to intercept the inflow and outflow messages, and then you want to make some modification. For example, when the client is, uh, the, let's say, uh, app is making a call with XML data, uh, data as a payload, and then you really want to convert that into the JSON and send it back to your microservice. That in that case, you have to intercept the message in the middle, and then you should be able to uh, trans transform that message into the JSON and then send it to the backend. Likewise, the uh, response intersector is for the outflow. So now the main question is the reason for everyone is suggesting for the API management solution is to get some uh, understanding about your ec ecosystem, for example, observability, and then you really want to enforce your policies like throttling policies or rate limiting policies, or you, you want to enforce the security po policies like uh, the tokens and everything. But now when we suggest the micro gateway, now this is going to be a problem because we, are, we don't have a centralized place to manage this. But for that, you always can push these information into the, uh, the management plane where it got the necessary ecosystem like API publisher and developer portal, which well known as the marketplace. At the same time, push the runtime information uh, into the business inside. The, the reason for that is uh, in the real world, you really don't need to stop the message uh, or the flow and uh, stop the message and you don't need to get the uh, insights. You can always collect asynchronously and get the business insight as you progress. And then for in terms of control plane, we do have a, a, a monitoring tools where when there is a security violation, okay, you can always publish that messages into the micro gateway and say there is a security violation happen and uh, if there is a traffic violation happen, for example, if a, a user using more than what they intended for, for example, if they subscribe for like browns, like 1,000 requests per second, but if they exceed that 1,000 requests per second, always you can enforce that policy because the micro gateway asynchronously sending that message back to the, uh, the control plane where the traffic controller is, and from there they can process and send the, publish the message back to the micro gateway asynchronously. For example, when a, when a user coming into the ga micro gateway and they are trying to, um, uh, first time, they, they're trying to access the get API over there. And then it's a, the counter start from there, right? So first count is one and then it keep on going. But at the same time, in the background, the micro gateway is going to send back those information to the traffic controller, where the traffic controller is doing the count internally. Once the count is triggered, so it can always send back the message to micro gateway and say this uh, quota is completed. So from that on point onwards, you can block the incoming request. So it will get micro gateway will always send the 429 HTTP header. <clears throat> Likewise, you also can always uh, detect the threats using the anomaly detection. Now, when we consider the uh, observability, the, the micro gateway is capable to interact with multiple other third parties, like it, there can be a Zipkin or Jagger using the open specification like OpenTrace. 
uh, and open census and so on and so forth. Then it's also work with the open standards. For example, the, the security flows are like all the way from OAuth 2 to OpenID Connect, then basic OAuth and so on and so forth. But when you consider the other interaction perspective from the protocol, it also should be able to support the uh, HTTP, gRPC, and so on and so forth. Now, in terms of uh, summarizing these discussion, so the enterprise really require an ecosystem which allow them to do a scalable manner uh, deployment at the same time, these uh, APIs should be able to compose together in a modular manner with the governance enforced on top of that. Uh, then the cell, for that cellular architecture providing a proper reference, how they can achieve and how they can uh, refer, recognize their team and software components to put into more agile manner. And micro gateways allows them to automate uh, the deployment of the API using the bottom up approach. Uh, they, at the same time, the management plane allows them to apply all the standardized policies and giving an observability capability on, through the micro gateways. And as we discussed last, the control plane allows them to apply all the enforcement policies such like uh, security, throttling policies and everything on the micro gateways. So that's I really want to uh, discuss with you guys and I am ready to take the question and answer right now. Could you discuss a little bit more what actually the controller, because if you're, if you're breaking thing up, yeah, the traffic controller, it so, seems to me that if you're putting a traffic controller in place here, this is looking more like an air traffic controller, not just a recording, uh, a recording studio or a right. place for logs. So, um, so, API management provide you uh, uh, enforcing the uh, developing a runtime run governance and enforcing the securities, everything, right? As a part of that, so when the developer, when they try, want to introduce their APIs, they also can always mention how much access they can do that on that API. For example, if uh, API developer saying to the ecosystem saying that, a uh, thousand requests per minute is the maximum allowed on this particular API in terms of consume, consum, uh, consuming the resources. So in that case, so that will be recorded in the traffic controller uh, system. In the runtime, when the request coming into the micro gateway, the micro gateway always send asynchronous signal back to traffic controller. So in traffic controller, you already have your policy saying that maximum 1,000 requests per minute. So the, the policy or the process over there are always counting those numbers on what is getting into the um, micro gateway as all collection. When there is a, a, a um, policy, uh, policy is fulfilled, so traffic controller will send back the message or the publish the message into the topic that will be always listened by micro gateway to make a decision whether am I allowed to uh, access this API or not. Okay, that, that sounds more like it's basically managing your service levels and, Correct. and that's about it. I would think that with that kind of distribution of micro gateways, you'd mm -hmm. be looking at the traffic controller to do a lot more switching and smart, smart direction now, over here, the traffic controller is more like uh, rate limiting. More questions? Uh, there's one more question. Thank you. Um, in your uh, cellular model, you showed that uh, microservices might be speaking different protocols. Right. Um, and I was just curious, the, um, the micro gateway 
the front end part of that, is that just speaking one consistent protocol or is it passing through a variety of protocols to those services? Um, so as you see over here, when we compose the micro gateway, we are introducing the APIs into the micro gateway. So at that point, you will be always introducing what kind of um, protocol that you want to talk with that particular API from the micro gateway. So one micro gateway could be speaking REST and gRPC simultaneously. Exactly, okay. at the same time. So at the same time, as you see over here, uh, yeah. Uh, let's say the, for example, the client over here talks HTTP because it's mobile, right? So mobile, HTTP is uh, coming to the micro gateway and micro gateway now has to be communicated with uh, post order gRPC. Now there is a protocol switching need to be happen. So that also can be done in the uh, micro gateway level because we have the ability to do the uh, request uh, interceptors. So in the, when the request coming in, you will intercept the request and translate the protocol. Great, thanks. There's room for one more question. Everybody's hungry. Ah, there's one more question. Can't eat yet. Uh, I was just wondering how the micro gateway different from the regular API gateway that we know. So um, the main uh, difference over here is if you see the, the previous very second or third slide over here. So in uh, normal, I mean, if you remove all the services, backend services, the micro gateway will always communicate synchronously with the um, what do you call the security services or the uh, rate limiting services and everything in order to facilitate that incoming request. Um, but the micro gateway, at, at the same time, all the APIs are enlisted in the one single um, facade phasing API gateway. But in the micro gateway, it's going to be broken down into small API pieces as you need. For example, uh, you really don't need all the APIs. For example, if you take um, a functionality called account API, uh, account services. But within the account services, there can be multiple different um, uh, functionalities and services can be laid together. So when you bring the micro gateway closer to your um, account API with the, all the necessary APIs that need to be talked, now you're bringing the gateway closer to your um, account API, rather than in previous case, it's always going to be kind of central of excellency, all the way it should go up to the API gateway and come down behind. Thanks. Yeah. So thank you, Wanji. Yeah, thanks.